Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to share with you how I increase my children's attention span and this is something that I've always been very intentional about and I've spent a lot of time researching and thinking about ways to train my children to be able to concentrate on whatever they are doing for extended periods of time. And so, you know, I have two children and they both have very different personalities. Um, one is, you know, she, she really takes the time to think before she acts and she's more on the cautious side. Whereas my son, he's always on the move. He's super active. He's always climbing stuff like, he's, you know, he doesn't stop moving. And so I know that the tips I'm about to share with you work with whatever your child's personality type is. And if you are struggling with homework or if you're a homeschooling parent, then make sure you watch this video until the end because the last three tips I'm going to share with you are specifically geared towards formal learning. And if you're new to my channel, then welcome. My name is Soraya. I'm a mother of two beautiful children. And here on this channel, I talk about homeschooling, children empowerment, and social emotional learning. So if these are topics you're interested in, I would love for you to stick around. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you never miss one of my videos. Right, so my first two tips are also the most obvious one. And the first one is avoid too much sugar. Right, so we know how it goes. You know, kids get back from school, they're hungry. And so you start by giving them a snack before you start tackling homework. The problem is a lot of time, especially processed industrial snacks that you buy ready-made, uh, you know, they've got so much sugar in it. And then, you know, your children are having this peak of glycemia. And so it's really hard for them to concentrate because they're having all of this sugar inside of their body, making it harder for them to just focus. So make sure you provide them with a healthy, balanced diet, as well as healthy snack alternatives. And you know, it's more sweets for you if they don't get to have them. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. Tip number two, make sure they get enough sleep. A tired child not only is going to be more grumpy, but they're also going to have a much harder time to concentrate. So make sure in the evening they go to bed at the right time and get enough hours of sleep during the night. And if they're very young, they may need a nap too. I'm going to put in the description box below a link to the NHS websites, which tells you exactly how many hours of sleep your child should have, depending on how old they are. Tip number three, limit screen time. Listen, I get it. I'm a mom of two. I know what it's like. You know, sometimes you just need to put them in front of a screen because you really need to get some stuff around the house or you really need to get some work done or you just need a shower. So I completely understand. But it's very important that you try and limit the amount of time that your child spends in front of a screen as much as possible. Why? When your child is watching the TV, the images on the screen are flashing at a very fast rate. And so over time, your child's brain gets used to that stimulus. And after that, it becomes very difficult for them to process information that is given to them at a normal pace. Everything seems bland to them. Everything seems too slow, too boring. And so you end up with a child who can't concentrate on one activity for extended periods of time, who just wants to keep moving from one activity to the next because everything seems so slow and boring and bland to them. Research has actually shown that children who are exposed to screens for longer periods of time are also more likely to display inattentive behavior, hyperactive behavior. They're more likely to, you know, make poor decisions. And also they're more likely to be very impulsive and they're more likely to be aggressive. So not only does it affect our children's behavior, there's also some discussions among scientists about whether it affects our children's brain development. And so because of that, the World Health Organization's recommendations in terms of how much screen time should your child actually have is for a child who is less than two years old, there should be zero screen time. And for a child who is between two and five years old, it should be no more than one hour per day. Tip number four, provide an outlet for excess energy. I recommend at least one hour of free, unstructured outdoor play every single day. This will help with attention span, with behavior, 
and with sleep as well. If you have a child who is a poor sleeper, get them outside, get them running, jumping. Free unstructured play is the way. Tip number five, create a routine and stick to it. You've probably already heard that children really thrive on routine and they really like when their schedule is predictable and you know knowing what comes next really makes transitions a lot easier. But I think that this is not only true for very young children, this is true for all of us. We are really creatures of habit. We really benefit from having a predictable schedule that's always the same, where we always know what's coming next. If you're homeschooling and you know your schedule is all over the place, it's never twice the same thing, then of course it's going to be a lot harder for you to get your child to come and sit down and do their work with you because, you know, it's always changing. Um, so, you know, they're not sure what's happening now. Are they supposed to sit with you and focus? But when do they get to play ball? Whereas if, if every day, you know, from 9 to 12, they have to do homeschool and then they know that after that they're going to have lunch and straight after that they're going to go to the park and run and play ball, then, you know, this sorts out all your problem because it's super predictable. And so this is true for young children, for older kids, but even for teenagers. Tip number six get your child to read books. And you know, this is something that I've been doing with my children since they were babies. And I've made a whole video about how I got my children to love reading books, which will be linked somewhere on the screen and in the description box below. And you know, with my children who both have two very different personalities, like I said, one is super active, always on the move, whereas the other one is more, you know, she takes time to think before she acts. And both of them, I got them to love reading. And for both of them, I am noticing an immense difference difference in how long they can sit and concentrate for and how long they can concentrate on the same activity for. So it makes a huge difference. I noticed this myself and as I was doing research for this video, I actually saw that this is a recommendation that experts give to parents who have children with ADHD because even for children with ADHD, it makes a massive difference in increasing their attention span but also, you know, it's a lot of really valuable skills that your child learns through reading books, you know, critical thinking, you know, uh, listening skills if you're reading aloud to them. So I highly encourage you to try this out. Tip number seven, encourage your child to do activities that, you know, require them to be focused for extended periods of time and also that have a clear beginning and an end. You know, I'm thinking of games like, you know, puzzles, board games, coloring. Um, for older children, you can do tic-tac-toe. You know, you can play games that have a clear start and a time when the game is finished and your child can move on to something else. Because the problem with games that, that you know, that are open-ended, like playing ball or playing dolls or, you know, things like that, Although, you know, they're, they're very good activities and they have a lot of benefits for other things, um, they're also activities that your child can just stop whenever they get bored. And so, you know, they can just move on to something else whenever they feel like it. And so it doesn't require them to remain focused and continue paying attention for an extended period of time. And so you really want to pick games that force your child to remain focused on the game or the activity until it is finished and there's a clear moment when it is finished. And so of course for this you want to make sure you pick games and activities that are the right level of difficulty for your child. If it's too hard then it will just be super demotivating and you will create more problems than you had to start with and if it's too easy then you know they'll be done in a minute and you know there won't be any benefits to it. So you know make sure you get the right you know level of difficulty for your child's age. Okay, so if you are a parent to a slightly older child and you're struggling during homework time or you're struggling during homeschooling, if you're a homeschooling family, then the next three tips are for you because they are really geared toward formal education. Um, and please let me know in the comments below, what are the subjects that your child is most struggling with where you really have the hardest time getting them to concentrate and remain focused on what they're doing throughout the time?
Tip number eight is to figure out what your child's learning style is. And this is super important for any formal learning, any learning at all for that matter. Because when you know what your child's learning style is, then you know how to best approach teaching them and you also know what resources to provide them with so that they can better engage with their learning. Some children are visual learners, meaning that they learn through seeing. Some children are auditory learners, meaning that they learn through hearing. Some children are tactile learners. They need to touch in order to really learn and understand. And some children are kinesthetic learners, meaning that they learn through doing and moving. Most very young children are kinesthetic learners, which is why, you know, doing games and activities and playing with them is much more effective to teach them than flashcards or worksheets. But you know, it's not the case for everyone. So you really need to spend the time to learn what your child's learning style is and to figure it out so that you can really truly provide them with the best possible learning environment and with the best possible resources for them. Tip number nine, avoid white noise and noise pollution. Because when there's too much noise around, it can be really difficult for your child to concentrate on what they're doing and to actually learn, especially if they're auditory learners. But even if they aren't, they really need a quiet environment in order to be able to focus for extended periods of time. That means you need to turn off the TV, the radio, any music that you may have on. Um, you should probably also think about putting the pause button on the washing machine, on the dryer, any appliances that make really loud noises. And of course, don't vacuum your home right when your child is trying to do their homework. And finally, tip number 10, get your child to do some brain gym. Have you ever heard of brain gym? Yes, it's a thing. That's when you do, you know, exercises that really stimulate your brain and helps it, you know, learn new skills or improve some of the skills it already has. And so doing some brain gym exercises can really help our children develop their cognitive skills, their memory, coordination, critical thinking. So these are amazing. They're so simple to do. They don't take a lot of time and they produce amazing results. And I'm going to soon post a video on my channel with my favorite brain gym exercises for kids. So make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss when this video comes up. And don't click out yet because I've actually got an extra bonus tip for you right there, which I think is also super helpful and I strongly believe in it. And that's positive self-talk. So positive self-talk is a mental strategy where your child learns a series of very short phrases that they can say to themselves in certain situation. And that really helps them, you know, find a solution to that situation. So it could be something as simple as keep cool or chill out, you know, when they're getting mad. And so they learn to say that phrase to themselves and that helps them, you know, stay on track. Or for a child who has, you know, trouble staying organized um, and who gets a bit overwhelmed when there's a lot to do, you can teach them to tell themselves, now, where do I begin? And just saying that gets them started. You know what I mean? Um, it can also be something very motivational, like I can do it if I try. So how do you teach your child to, you know, to memorize and use these uh, phrases and this positive self-talk? Well, there's four steps to that. Number one, you get them to say it out loud. So at first, they're probably going to repeat after you and then you encourage them to say it out loud. So for example, before starting their homework, it could be now, where do I begin? Or it could be, I can do it if I try. Whatever works for your child. It's really important that you make sure that this, you know, your child owns that phrase and that they can really recognize themselves in it. So come up with that phrase with your child. So get them to say it out loud. Once they are starting to be really comfortable and they know it well, they can say it in a very low voice. That's step number two. Step number three is moving their lips to say the phrase, but not actually making any sound. And then step number four is they can say it in their heads silently before they get started. And that's when it's fully internalized and it's almost automatic. You know, it becomes that little voice in your head, like you're about to start something and you automatically automatically think, now, where do I begin? And that helps you just 
get started. I personally strongly believe in the power of positive affirmations and positive self-talk and I strongly encourage you to use that with your child. It makes a huge difference. I have seen it. I've used it with myself. I've used it with people around me and I can see what a big difference it makes. So try it out. If you're enjoying the content of today's video, then please make sure you subscribe to my channel because in the next couple of days, I'm going to be posting a video about how to create a good learning environment for your child. And so the content of that video really complements what we have been talking about today because it's not only about increasing your child's attention span. It's really about thinking more broadly about how you create the perfect learning environment at home that really embodies your family values and really guides your child in their learning journey and really serves a purpose. So we're going to be thinking about all of these things in my next video. So please make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you get notified when that video comes live. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you in my next video.